Losing weight and burning fat can be very challenging, and it's especially hard to stick it out if you don't see quick wins in the form of results either in the mirror or at least on the scale. Luckily, there are simple and effective ways to significantly speed up this process. Whether it's changing your diet, increasing your physical activity, or making small lifestyle changes, there are many options available to help boost your metabolism and get your body burning fat more efficiently. So today, I wanna to go over 10 simple ways to speed up your fat loss, and each one is backed by scientific evidence proven to be effective at helping people lose weight and burn fat. And first, I wanna start with a technique that many of you have never heard of, known as Protein Sparing Modified Fast, or PSMF in short. This is a weight loss approach designed to get you as lean as fast as possible. It accomplishes this by putting you through a low carb, low fat, high protein diet that restricts calorie intake to a minimal level. The PSMF diet typically only includes lean protein sources such as chicken, fish, and turkey, as well as low carb vegetables like spinach, broccoli, and cauliflower. Other foods are avoided. Now before you go ahead and implement this strategy, I would only do this if you have a body fat percentage over 26% as a man and over 39% as a woman. In those scenarios, you can implement a PSMF for two weeks on and then take two weeks off where you bring your calories back up to maintenance levels with a more even distribution of protein, carbs, and fats. Just make sure you're not exceeding your maintenance calorie numbers. You can do this for four to 12 weeks without risking muscle loss as long as you get enough protein and you're also lifting weights. Also, if you're leaner than 26% body fat as a man and 39% body fat as a woman, I wouldn't implement it on a consistent schedule. Instead, just follow a protein sparing modified fast diet one or two non-consecutive days per week where you eat according to the PSMF guidelines. You wanna to try to do this on days that you're not exercising because your body doesn't need the additional calories on those days. Simply only consume lean protein sources and avoid all other foods. Make sure to get at least 0.73 grams of protein per pound of body weight per day while following this eating schedule. Even though following this kind of plan can be very challenging, when it's done right, it's one of the, if not the fastest way to lose weight while retaining muscle mass. Another strategy instead of a protein sparing modified fast is to simply do a more aggressive cut. In other words, you increase your calorie deficit. Keep in mind that once again, your current level of body fat determines how much more aggressively you can cut your calories back without losing muscle. And if you don't know your current body fat percentage, just take a look at the screen as I explain each body fat percentage category. So if you're a male with over 26% body fat or a female with over 39% body fat, you can shoot for a calorie deficit of 40 to 50% under maintenance calories. If you're a man with between 21 and 26% body fat or a female with between 33 to 39% body fat, you shouldn't create more of a calorie deficit than 30 to 40% below maintenance. If you are 14 to 21% body fat as a man or 24 to 33% body fat as a woman, go for a calorie deficit of 20 to 30% under maintenance. And finally, if you're 10 to 14% body fat as a man or 14 to 24% as a woman, you can go for a calorie deficit between 5 to 20%. Even with these more aggressive deficit numbers, you shouldn't worry about losing muscle. As long as you're getting enough protein, lifting weights, and getting enough sleep, the amount of muscle you'll lose should be minimal. For example, in a study where men and women were placed on an 800 calorie per day diet for 12 weeks, they still managed to maintain their muscle mass as long as they were weight training three times a week. Also, in another study, obese men were instructed to eat 1,000 fewer calories per day while lifting weights three days a week, and they were able to maintain their muscle mass while dropping over 20 pounds of fat. This actually brings us to my next point. You should primarily focus your workouts on strength training and muscle growth because that'll help you maintain muscle mass as you drop body fat. Maintaining muscle mass is not only beneficial from an aesthetic perspective, but also from a long-term weight loss perspective because carrying more muscle will improve your metabolism and your insulin sensitivity. Now, aside from eating enough protein, the best way to prevent muscle loss while dieting is to make sure that you maintain your strength levels. When you lose weight, it's natural to get weaker, but your goal should be to try your absolute best to prevent that from happening. You do this by trying to stick to the same weight load you were normally using unless you absolutely have to drop that weight lower. And the only reason you should drop the weight lower is if you drop below your lower rep range limit. So let's say your rep range is six to 10 reps and you were bench pressing 135 pounds for 10 reps before you started cutting. Do your best to maintain that same weight load throughout the entire cut, unless you hit a point where you can no longer perform six reps. Only then you can drop the weight by five to 10 pounds and repeat that same process. The point is don't make the mistake of just dropping the weight automatically because you feel tired from cutting calories. Fight to maintain as much weight on the bar as you can over time. 
Another simple thing you can do is start each of your meals with either salad, veggies, or a low calorie soup. I've mentioned in other videos that drinking a glass of water before a meal can cause a stretch reflex in the stomach that is proven to assist with weight loss. Well, salads, veggies, and soups can have a similar and even greater effect at filling you up before you eat the more calorie dense and more palatable parts of your meal consisting of the protein, carbs, and fats. Keep in mind your salad should not be loaded with a high calorie dressing or a ton of oil as this defeats the whole purpose. Some great low calorie soup options that you can eat include tomato soup, miso soup, vegetable soup, and mushroom soup. To make veggies, you can quickly take some frozen mixed vegetables and throw them on a frying pan with a little bit of oil and some seasoning. That's all you gotta do. This saves you the time that you'd spend cutting the vegetables on your own, and frozen vegetables are just as nutritious as fresh vegetables. If you're too busy or for whatever reason you can't prepare soup, salads, or veggies, then simply at least have a glass or two of water before your meal because it can help make fat loss easier and faster. Eating more fiber in general is another simple and effective way to maintain a calorie deficit. Fiber has a filling effect leading to a reduction in calorie consumption. For example, there are studies that show adding 14 grams of fiber per day can decrease total daily energy intake by 10%. Fiber makes food more filling due to its ability to prolong the time that food stays in your stomach while having a low energy density providing only 2 calories per gram of fiber. Fiber's tough and crunchy texture also contributes to satiety by requiring more chewing. This is why if you want to speed up fat burning while regulating your hunger, it's a good target for men to try to get at least 38 grams of fiber per day and for women to aim for at least 25 grams. Obviously vegetables are very high in fiber, but there are also high fiber snacks that you wouldn't think are high on fiber like butter-free popcorn, which just like veggies can help fill you up for a relatively small amount of calories as well. Next, if you crave sugar, you can easily replace simple sugar with artificial sweeteners. The average American consumes 270 calories per day in the form of added sugar. For most Americans, the majority of the sugars come from soda. This adds up to 1,890 calories per week. Cutting these calories out can help you lose about half a pound of extra fat per week on its own. The issue with consuming sugary calories is that they do not effectively curb hunger and they tend to cause an increase in total caloric intake. This is why people that consume more added sugars tend to be heavier than people that don't. The good news is that the opposite is also true. Removing sugary sodas from your diet can reduce calorie intake and lead to fat loss. To achieve this, it's advisable to replace soda with healthier options like water, tea, coffee, or diet soda. Most human studies actually indicate that artificial sweeteners, including aspartame and sucralose, are safe when consumed in the recommended amounts. However, saccharin may have an exception because one study found it impaired gut health and glucose tolerance in some of the subjects, so it may be best to avoid drinks containing saccharin. Now, another thing you can do is walk more throughout the week. I've mentioned before that to lose weight, you must be in a calorie deficit. So you'll either have to reduce the number of calories you eat or you'll have to burn more calories throughout the entire day. One easy yet very effective way to do this is by simply walking more. For example, take your dog for a walk more often. Go out into nature or park your car a bit further away at work. It might not sound like a big deal, but these small changes can make a big difference in terms of the amount of calories you burn when you look at it over the course of a week, a month, or a year. For example, a 155 pound person burns about 270 calories while walking at a moderate pace on a flat surface for one hour. That equals almost 1,900 calories per week. One of the nice things about a low intensity form of cardio like walking is that you're able to burn more calories without creating constrained energy expenditure. Constrained energy expenditure makes you reduce your activity levels later on in the day. So for example, after going for a run, people usually either consciously or unconsciously move less afterwards, causing them to undo some of the extra calories they burned. They may also slouch more in their chair and fidget less throughout the day, but you won't have this negative effect from low intensity cardio. So go ahead and try to be active throughout the day, whether in the form of walking or another activity like cycling, hiking, gardening, or whatever you're into. Another excellent way to speed up fat loss is by incorporating high intensity interval training, also known as HIT, into your workout routine. An example is combining exercises like burpees, squats, and mountain climbers in a short 20 minute circuit with minimal breaks. For example, according to Harvard Health Publishing, a 185 pound person can burn up to around 577 calories in just 30 minutes of doing a high intensity interval training cycling session. Given that it's estimated that one pound of fat contains around 3,500 calories, that means adding 30 minutes of HIT to your daily routine would burn over one pound of body fat per week if you're above 185 pounds. 
Next, you wanna make sure that you're getting all your essential vitamins and minerals to speed up fat loss. Pretty much all vitamins and minerals will impact your weight loss results in one way or another. For example, iodine is vital for the synthesis of thyroid hormones, which impact your metabolism. Calcium assists with weight loss by affecting adipocyte metabolism. Zinc will impact your metabolism as well and can have a big effect if you're currently deficient. In one case study, for example, a zinc deficient woman raised her resting metabolic rate by 527 calories a day just by fixing that deficiency. Iron is another one that's crucial for energy production, so getting enough of this mineral benefits workout performance while being deficient reduces endurance capacity, resistance to fatigue, and strength levels. Then you have vitamin D, which can impact appetite. Some researchers believe that not having enough vitamin D contributes to obesity by stimulating appetite. The problem is that most people suffer from one or more micronutrient deficiencies, which even tends to happen when you eat a relatively balanced and healthy diet. This is because our current agricultural practices have made food less nutrient dense, as well as due to reasons like increased stress levels and the heavy filtration of water. So ideally, you would want to meet your micronutrient needs through your diet, and for vitamin D, it would be through sunlight exposure. However, if that's not possible, then supplementing with specific micronutrients that you're deficient in can definitely be an excellent idea. Finally, last but not least, you should be consistent rather than yo-yo back and forth with your diet. It's always easier and faster when you have momentum on your side. You could implement all the tips that I just went over, but if you're not being consistent, you'll never receive the results that you're after. So make sure you're consistent. Even if you've completed a PSMF diet, you should still be eating clean afterwards when you return your calories back up to maintenance. That about wraps it up. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Also, if you'd like a done for you plan to skip all the trial and error with burning off that excess body fat, you can head on over to my website and try my free six week shred. You'll get a 42 day workout plan, a recipe book, a six week meal plan based on your preferences, and an accountability coach to guide you through the whole process. To find out how the program works, just click the link in the description, or you can head straight on over to my website at gravitytransformation.com. I'll see you guys soon.